back. This is Joe Sambo. I've had a lot of students that have had problems with Venn diagrams, so let's give it a shot today. All right, let me give you the breakdown here. Let's say we had 100 students who liked Harry Potter and 100 students who liked Star Wars. Now, we can tell that there's 200 students, right? We have 100 here and 100 there, so that's 200. Okay, where it gets tricky goes like this. Let's say then we still have 100 students who like Harry Potter and 100 students who like Star Wars. But let's just say we have an overlap of five students. What I mean by overlap is we have five students who like both Harry Potter and Star Wars. I guess my son Jude would be one of those. How many do we have total here? We no longer have exactly 200. Uh, we could do it the long way. All right, we'd have 95 people who like Harry Potter but do not like Star Wars. Uh, and we have 95 people who like Star Wars but do not like Harry Potter. And the way to calculate this is we'd add 95 plus 5, that's 100, and we add the, that 100 to 95. So now we have a total of 195 students. Remember, those two circles were completely separate. We had 200. Now we have 195 students. You notice we have five less. One way of looking at it, is you could add the total that like Harry Potter, which is 100, plus the total that like Star Wars, which is 100. That's 200. And then subtract that by how many people like both. That's 195. So let's change it up where we still have 100 that like Harry Potter and we still have 100 that like Star Wars. But let's say the overlap now is 10, 10 students who like both. And now if we have 10 students who like both, then we have 90 who like Harry Potter uh, and don't like Star Wars, and then we have 90 who like Star Wars that do not like Harry Potter, and then we have 10 that like both. If we want to add up the total students we have now, we'd add up the 90 plus 10 over on this side, that's 100, and then we'd add that to 90, so we have 190. And then another way to do it is we would add the people who liked Harry Potter, which was 100, plus the people who like Star Wars, which is 100, and that's 200. I'm doing it the long way just to kind of show you the, the principles. Uh, and then that's 200. And then we would subtract it by the people that like both, which is 10. So then we have 190. So let's say the 100 that like Harry Potter and the 100 who like Star Wars. And now let's say we have 30 people who like both. Now the fast way to do this would be we add the 100 and 100, which is 200. And then we subtract it by the overlap, which is 30 and we get 170. That's the fast way of doing it. Let's do it the slow way. If we have 30 overlap, uh, meaning that they like both, and we had 100 that like Harry Potter, then we have to have 70 on this side of the circle, which means there's 70 that like Harry Potter who don't like Star Wars, and then we have 70 who like Star Wars and don't like Harry Potter. And what we do is we add those three together. We get 70 plus 30 is 100, and 100 plus 70 is 170. If, if the question said something like, let's say the class has a total of 200 students, uh, and 100 like Harry Potter, and 100 like Star Wars, and 30 like both, what would happen is then 170 are in these brackets, and then that would must mean 30 of them like neither, right? Because then you want to add all that up to 200. This one says, in a class of 160 students, 110 liked basketball, and 95 liked hockey, and 41 liked neither. How many liked both basketball and hockey? If you want, you can pause it right now. Give this a shot. So what do we have here? We have 110 who like basketball, 95 who like hockey, right? And there's an overlap right there. Oh, well, we don't know the overlap, so we'll call it X. We know that 41 like neither. Um, and then we also know that there's 160 students. What we have to do, we have to think of it this way. All of this has to equal 160. So the number of basketball students who do not like hockey plus the number of people that like both, which we're calling X, plus the number of hockey students who do not like basketball, plus 41 has to equal 160. I would try to find, you know, how many have to be in this region. Uh, and, you know, the way to do that is we would subtract 41 from each side. Okay, so that would cancel that out. And then this would equal 119. So all of this up here 
has to equal 119. Because I would add that 110, the people who like basketball, plus I would add that to, you know, add 95, the people who like hockey, and that's going to be 205. We need to, like we did before, we would subtract it by the people that like both, but we don't know how many people like both, we'll just call it X. So we have 205 minus the people who like both, and that has to equal 119 because we already calculated that 119 to be the people that have to be in that region. So we would have 205 minus X equals 119. I would subtract 205 from each side. Okay, that would cancel out. We get negative X equals, uh, if we do the math here, 119 minus 205, we're going to get negative 86. You can do it on the side or on a calculator if you feel like it. So we get negative X equals negative 86, and then we multiply negative 1 to each side. So x equals 86, that's the answer. So 86 people must like both. We have the 160 students, so 95 liked hockey, and 100 and 110 liked basketball, right? And we don't know the overlap, so we'll call it x. And we do know that 41 liked neither. So what we can do here is we could do it uh, more mathematically. We know that the number here has to be this whole circle, which is 110, minus what's outside that circle, which is x. And we know this number here has to be 95 minus what's in the middle there, which is x. So we know the number on this side has to be x, right? And then we know this. We are we know the number that like neither. That's 41. And then we know the total total of everything, which is 160. So now we could have 110 minus x plus x plus 95 minus x plus 41 equals 160. And then um, you can do a little bit of, like here's a positive x and here's a negative x, so that cancels out. Let's line up the numbers together. We have 100, 110 plus 95 plus 41 minus x equals 160. So if we group all that together, so 110 plus 95, that's 205. Yeah, that's 205, and we have 41. So that would be 246. Okay, so we have 246 minus x equals 160. Uh, to me, I like to have positive x's sometimes, so I go kind of like that. So I'd go 246 equals 160 plus x. Then I subtract 160 from each side. Oh, I did that way. Uh, so that cancels that out. We get x equals, and then this would be, oops, sorry. Yeah, 86. So 86 equals x. All right, same thing. Uh, but those are a couple ways of doing it. Try another problem here. In a class of 70 students, 50 liked hummus and 42 liked carrots. Exactly 32 liked both. How many liked neither? We have a class of 70 students. We have 50 who liked hummus. There's an overlap, so I draw it this way. We have 42 who liked carrots. We have 32 who liked both. What I would always do is figure out, well, how many people total do we have in this whole region that like either hummus, carrots, or both? If there's 50 people that like hummus and 32 of them like both, then how many people would be here? There's have to be 18, right? Then the next question is how many people like carrots who don't like both? If all the people like carrots are 42, 32 of them like both, then there has to be 10 people here. I would then just add up those numbers, I'd have 18 people who like homos plus 32 who like both, that's 50, which makes sense because that's the 50 that's up there too. Then I'd add that 50 plus 10, and that's going to be 60. So there's 60 people who like homos, carrots, or both. But the problem is how many people are in the class? If we go back up here, there's 70 people. You just go 70 minus 60 uh, is 10. So there has to be a 10 people exactly who like neither. All right, now, see if you could do one on your own. Uh, some of you younger folks will then look up who the heck is Elvis and who the heck is Johnny Cash. In a class of 250, 140 like Elvis and 155 like Johnny Cash. Exactly 101 like both. How many like neither? Figure that out, put the answer in the comments. You gotta understand that one. Uh, it's, it's good practice. And if there's any other subjects you don't understand, hit me up. I'd love to do it together. Thank you.